In this video, we're going to work through several examples of problems involving trigonometric substitution. In all of these trigonometric substitutions, we're looking for one of two patterns. We're either looking for something that looks like a squared minus x squared, in which case we're going to substitute x equals a sine theta, or we're looking for a squared plus x squared, in which case we're going to substitute x equals a tan theta. In this case, we see 4 minus x squared, which means my a is 2, and my substitution is going to be x equals 2 times the sine of theta. So my dx is going to be 2 times the cosine of theta, d theta. So when I do this substitution, I just replace all the x's with 2 sine theta, and I replace dx with 2 cosine theta, d theta. So nothing really prevents me from almost always being able to do this kind of substitution, but what we want to be making sure of is that this is actually helping us get closer to a solution to this problem. So what do we end up with? So on the bottom of that fraction, we have 4 minus the quantity 2 sine theta, all squared, multiplied by 2 cosine theta, d theta. And the reason for doing this substitution, let's watch what happens inside that square root. So we get 4 minus 4 sine squared of theta. If I factor out the 4, I get 1 minus sine squared of theta. And 1 minus sine squared, by my Pythagorean trigonometric identity, is 4 cosine squared of theta. And so when I take the square root of 4 cosine squared theta, I get 2 cosine theta. So the square root goes away because of the trigonometric substitution that we did. And even better, this 2 cosine theta and that 2 cosine theta divide out. So we just have the integral of d theta. So that's just theta plus c. So what was theta? Well, let's go back to our substitution. We substituted x equals 2 sine theta, but what we were really doing is setting theta equal to the inverse sine of x over 2. That's really the substitution we're doing. We're just writing it in the form x equals 2 sine theta to allow us to use our trig identities. So if we think about this equation, divide both sides by 2, x over 2 equals the sine of theta, and then so theta, that's where I'm getting theta equals the inverse sine of x over 2. So theta plus c, theta was the inverse sine of x over 2. And so my final answer here is the inverse sine of x over 2 plus c. All right, so in this problem, we see the a, uh, a squared plus x squared pattern, which means since our a is 3, we're going to substitute x equals 3 times the tangent of theta dx is the derivative of tan 3 tan theta, which is 3 secant squared theta, and so we do our substitution. So we get 1 divided by the square root of 9 plus. When I square 3 tan theta, I get 9 tan squared theta, and then dx is 3 secant squared theta. Now again, here I'm going to use my trig identities. I'm going to factor out the 9. I get 9 times 1 tan squared theta. 1 plus tan squared theta is 9 secant squared theta. And then we take the square root, we get 3 times the secant of theta. So this is the integral of 1 over 3 secant theta multiplied by 3 secant squared of theta, d theta. And again, we get some simplification. This secant on the bottom divides out with one of those copies of secant that I have on the top. And the 3 divides out with the 3. So we end up with just the integral of secant of theta, d theta. Now, that's a formula that we should know. We should know that the antiderivative of secant theta is the natural log of the absolute value of secant theta plus tan theta plus c. But this answer is given in terms of theta, and we always want to go back to the original variable. So what is secant theta and what is tan theta? Well, one of those questions is relatively easy to answer because, again, we know that x equals 3 tan theta, which means if I just had tan theta by itself, that would just be x over 3. But what's the secant of theta? For this, we're going to draw a little triangle. And this is something that we do have to do fairly frequently when doing trig substitutions to get the other trig functions once we have our trig substitution. So the way we're going to draw our triangle is we're putting theta as one of the acute angles in my right triangle. And since I know that the tangent of theta is x over 3, and I know that tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, then I can label this triangle with x as the opposite side and 3 is the adjacent side. Then I can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out that this hypotenuse is 9 plus x squared square root. So what does that tell me about the secant of theta? Well, secant of theta is 1 over cosine theta. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, 
which means this is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent, which is going to be the square root of 9 plus x squared all over 3. So that's the secant of theta, and that is my final answer here. So drawing the little triangle and figuring out opposites, adjacents, and things like that, that's a common step that we have to do sometimes in these trig substitution problems. All right, what about this one? So again, we see a squared minus x squared. My a is 1, and so my substitution is going to be x equals 1 times the sine of theta, or just x equals sine theta. dx will be the derivative of sine theta, which is cosine of theta d theta. So let's plug in. x is sine theta, so this is sine squared of theta on the top. On the bottom, I have 1 minus sine squared inside that square root, and then my dx is cosine theta d theta. So that's the integral of sine squared theta divided by cosine theta multiplied by cosine theta d theta. This cosine theta and this cosine theta divide out, and so I get the antiderivative of sine squared of theta. Now we hopefully recognize that from our previous study of trigonometric integrals, and unfortunately this means we're going to have to use a half angle formula. The half angle formula is that sine squared of theta is 1 half times 1 minus cosine of 2 theta. And so now we have to integrate that. Well, the antiderivative of 1 is theta, so that gives us 1 half theta. The antiderivative of minus cosine of 2 theta is going to be 1 half times the sine of 2 theta. So this 1 half was already there. That's this 1 half that I distributed. And then this second 1 half, that's coming from the substitution u equals 2 theta that I would have had to do for that second part. And then plus c. But again, the tricky part here is that we have to go back to the original variable x. So how do I rewrite sine of 2 theta? Well, here again, another trig identity comes into play. In this case, the ability to rewrite sine of 2 theta as 2 times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. That's a double angle formula that you might remember from trigonometry. Okay, so what do all these theta expressions mean in terms of x? Well, again, x is sine of theta, which really means that uh, theta is the inverse sine of x. So this is 1 half times the inverse sine of x. 1 fourth times 2 is 1 half. Sine of theta, that's just x. What about the cosine of theta? That's where I'm going to need my triangle. So I draw a little right triangle, label one of the angles theta. Since the sine of theta is x, I can think of sine of theta as x over 1, which is opposite over hypotenuse x on the opposite side, 1 on the hypotenuse side. Pythagorean theorem gives me the third side, which is going to be the square root of 1 minus x squared. So what's the cosine of theta? It's the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is the square root of 1 minus x squared divided by 1. And then I still have my plus c. So there's my result. Now this problem looks a lot like the problem that we just did, but there's a slight difference that hopefully you notice, which is that the top of the fraction is just x instead of being x squared. And so we might jump into this problem with both feet and start doing trig substitutions and drawing triangles and doing all of that complicated stuff that we just did in the previous example. But actually this problem is much simpler because this is just a simple substitution problem. Because if I let u equal 1 minus x squared, du is negative 2x dx. And I can get a negative 2x in the top of my fraction as long as I put a minus 1 half out front. So not every problem that contains an expression that looks like a squared minus x squared or a squared plus x squared, not every problem like that is a trig substitution. They often are, and we could use trig substitution here, but it's much more complicated than what we could do, which is the simple substitution. Now, sometimes we can't avoid trig substitution, but when we can avoid it, when we can use a simpler method, we definitely want to. So we think of this as u to the negative 1 half. We add 1 to that exponent. That gives us u to the positive 1 half. Divide by the new exponent, multiply by 2, plus c. So that's minus u to the 1 half. So that's minus the square root of 1 minus x squared, plus c. And we're done. So don't just apply trig substitution without thinking about it. First, think to yourself, do I really need to use trig substitution, or is there an easier way?
Back to problems where we really do need a trig substitution. In this case, since we have 16 plus x squared inside our expression, then we're going to let x equal 4 times the tangent of theta. Our a is 4 here. So dx is going to be 4 times the secant squared of theta, d theta. So let's plug in and see what we get. On the bottom of that fraction, 16 plus 4 tangent theta all squared. That's going to be 16 secant squared theta. And then we're going to square that. And then my dx is 4 times the secant squared of theta. So we get 1 over 256 secant to the fourth of theta times 4 secant squared of theta. 4 over 256 simplifies to 1 over 64. We've got two copies of secant on the top, four copies on the bottom, which means we'll get two copies left over on the bottom, one over secant squared theta d theta. So what's one over secant squared? Well, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So this is one over secant squared, which is the cosine squared of theta. And again, we're in a situation where we're going to need to use our half angle formulas. So we'll rewrite cosine squared of theta as one half. I'll pull that one half out of the integral times 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. Continue up here. 1 over 64 times 1 half is 1 over 128. We take the antiderivative of 1, we get theta. Take the antiderivative of cosine of 2 theta, we get 1 half sine of 2 theta. And then plus c. Just like before, we did a problem like this earlier. We're going to rewrite sine of 2 theta as 2 times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. That's going to cancel out that one half that we've got there. So we've got 1 over 128, all multiplied by theta plus sine theta cosine theta. What are sine theta and cosine theta? Well, we know that tangent of theta is x over 4. So again, we're going to draw our little triangle. Because the tangent of theta is x over 4 and tangent is opposite over adjacent, we're going to label our opposite side x and our adjacent side 4. Pythagorean theorem gives us that this hypotenuse is 16 plus x squared square root. So 1 over 128, what's theta? x was 4 tan theta, so theta is inverse tan of x over 4. Looking at my triangle, sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then I still have my plus C. Finally, we can clean this up just a little bit. Because I've got the square root of 16 plus x squared multiplied by itself, so the bottom of that fraction just becomes 16 plus x squared. And there's my final solution. All right, last one. Same kind of process, same ideas. So we've got square root of 25 minus x squared. So that's a squared minus x squared. So we're going to substitute x equals 5 times the sine of theta. dx will be 5 times the cosine of theta, d theta. Plug everything in. We've got square root of 25 minus 25 sine squared theta, all divided by 25 sine squared theta. And then dx is 5 cosine theta, d theta. So inside that square root, we have 25 cosine squared theta. So that's going to give us 5 cosine theta. We've got 25 sine squared theta on the bottom. And then we've got 5 cosine theta, d theta over here. So we can do some simplification. This 5 and this 5 are 25. Divide out with that 25. So we've got cosine squared divided by sine squared. So what do we do now? Well. There's not a lot we can do in terms of a simple substitution. A lot of times when we have a fraction, we try to do a substitution involving the bottom of the fraction, but we've got two copies of cosine on the top of the fraction, so that's not going to work here. So this time, the trick is to rewrite this as the cotangent squared of theta. Sine over cosine, that's tangent, so cosine over sine, that's cotangent. And now we didn't really talk a lot about how to deal with integrals involving cotangent and cosecant, but we're going to apply similar ideas to what we did when we had integrals involving tangent and secant. If we had had tangent squared here, the trick would have been to use the Pythagorean identity to rewrite that in terms of secant squared. So since we have cotangent squared, we're going to rewrite that in terms of cosecant squared. 
our identity is that cotan squared plus one is equal to cosecant squared. So cotan squared by itself is going to be cosecant squared of theta minus one. Just like the antiderivative of secant squared is tangent squared, the antiderivative of cosecant squared is minus cotan. So that's minus cotangent of theta. And then minus theta, that's the antiderivative of one plus c. What's theta? Well, x was five sine theta. So theta is the inverse sine of x over five. For cotan of theta, we're gonna have to draw our little triangle. So here's my little triangle, there's my theta. The sine of theta, is x over five, that's opposite over hypotenuse. And so the adjacent side is square root of 25 minus x squared. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So cotangent is adjacent over opposite, which in this case is square root of 25 minus x squared over x. And I still have this minus sign. So there's my solution. So Trick substitution problems can be challenging, but the main thing is to recognize the a squared minus x squared or the a squared plus x squared to get started with the correct substitution. And then just remember your trig identities and drawing your little triangles as they come up. Good luck.